From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of terror at night. Several years had now passed since Tarzan's return to his beloved jungle. The mask of civilization had begun to slip from him. And once again, he had become like the other denizens of the forest, suspicious of every strange scent, wary of the approach of aliens. An hour ago, he had sensed the coming of white men and had left his seacoast cabin and taken to the trees. Now he glared down as two rough-looking, jungle-weary intruders passed directly below him. They had many weeks' growth of beard on their faces, and the clothes they wore, which might have once been navy uniforms, were now tattered rags. Oh, I tell you, mate, you've got a feeling someone's watching us. Ah, eh, relax, Pete, relax. They haven't followed us this far. Oh, perhaps they haven't, perhaps they haven't. It's getting me down, it is. Ah, I'm telling you to relax. A fine fix we'd have been in if I'd relaxed back there. And by this time, we'd be where the rest of them are now. Let's not... Let's not talk about what happened to the others, Pete. Oh, I don't fancy talking about what happened to them any more than you do, Harry, but stop telling me to relax. I won't relax until we're out of this bloody jungle. Perhaps not even then. Okay, okay, so don't relax. Well, I'll be blowed. Hey, a cabin. A wooden cabin. Right in the middle of the blooming wilderness. A smoke coming out of the ruddy chimney. Hey, Pete. Pete, maybe maybe we get some chow there, huh? Yes. Or maybe run into their bobbies. Oh, the police ain't after us. They might be by this time, matey. Well, I'm taking a chance. I'm tired of eating berries and wild bananas and rotten coconuts. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And when there's fire, there may be some food cooking. Well, I'm downright starving myself, matey, but I ain't risking a pair of bracelets on me wrists for a meal in me belly. Well, I am. There ain't no telephones or wireless around here, and no one knows about us. You can do as you like, but I'm bumming a meal. I'm not spending another day eating bird food. Hey, hey, hey. Wait for me, matey. Don't go off and leave your old pal. Ah, well, hurry up, then. I'm not waiting all day. Well, now, if we got separated, well, we could never find each other again. I'd be all alone. And they might still be after oh, us. Oh, Pete Scruggins, you're giving me a pain. I took such a yellow let you. Don't, don't get in a flap. If you say so, we'll knock on the door. Come along. Let's be real polite, like. There's no sense in having a squabble here and making a bad impression. Okay, Limey. Well, here goes. <laughs> no one home? Eh, just our luck. Perhaps it is luck. Perhaps if someone was home, they... Well, it's not going to stop me. I want some honest grub and I'm busting in. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> hey, who are you? You have nothing to fear from me. I do not intend to hurt you, but leave my cabin alone. I, we, we didn't mean no harm, Governor. And you see, it's this way. We've been beating our way through this ruddy jungle for days now. I can we... see you've been traveling in the jungle, but that doesn't give you the right to break into my house. Oh, we weren't really planning on doing that, Governor. What no. are you apologizing for, Limey? Sure, we were going to break in. We're lost, we're exhausted, and we're hungry. Would it have hurt anything if we slipped in and borrowed a little grub? Hey, Eddie, you I know a... what I'm doing. I know how you have to talk to these savages. Savages have one law. Those who are hungry must hunt for their own food. If you came into the jungle without weapons with which to kill game, you deserve to starve. Well, now, look, Governor, look. Me mate here has a quick tongue, but he don't mean no harm. We're right hungry, we are. We'd be mighty thankful for a spot of food. Now, you wouldn't really let your fellow man starve, would you? Would you now, Governor? No, I suppose not. All right, I'll give you food. But once you've eaten, you'll have to leave. I refuse to harbor criminals. What? He knows. Well, come on in. Thanks. But let's get one thing straight, Big Shot. We ain't no criminals. And we ain't beggars, either. When we reach Mombasa, we'll have enough dough to buy a palace and fill every room with rib roast and apple pie. That's right. And when we get to Mombasa... We'll send you some brass to pay you for the grub. We'll have plenty. We will, all right. Yes, I'm sure you're a man of great wealth. You'll look it. Oh, yeah? Well, if you think we're lying to you, 
Take a look at this. Pearls. Six magnificent pearls. You shouldn't have showed him, Harry. Oh, I guess he shouldn't have. So this is why you flee through the jungle in fear. Who did you steal these from? Hey, <laughs> it so happens we didn't steal them. So help me, that's the truth, Governor. They was a present, that's what they was. All right. We'll all return to where you came from, and we'll see who was kind enough to give you a fortune in pearls. No. No. Please don't make us go back to Gonica. Gonica? No, I doubt that they're even African pearls. Certainly pearls like that never came from the waters near Gonica. Still, we shall make inquiries there. Now, look, wise guy, my pal Pete made a boner when he let it slip we came here from Gonica. But big as you are, you ain't forcing either of us to go back there. That's one land neither of us is setting foot in again. Why are you so afraid of that part of the jungle? Well, I'll tell you, Governor. I'll tell you all about it. Only don't make us go back there. Take the pearls. Do anything you like, but don't make us go back to that terror. We couldn't stand that again. In just a moment, we shall return to our story. It was more than probable that the little cockney had let one item of truth slip out, for the rough-looking strangers had come from the direction of Gonica. But Gonica was a poor native village near the coast, and pearls from the African coast are seldom worth much. Those the American had shown Tarzan were worthy of an oriental potentate, yet no wealthy potentates were within thousands of miles of the miserable native village or the nearby port of Carisi, to which only the poorest of ships came. Yes, the men, the pearls, and their great fear were all mysterious and intriguing. And Tarzan knew that men talk more freely when their stomachs were full. Another piece of meat, Harry? Yeah, thanks, uh, Tarzan. Sure you ain't got anything stronger than this fruit juice? I'm very sorry. Ah, that's all right. I'll have another glass of it anyway. Now, don't go making a pig of yourself, Harry. It ain't polite. Just worry about yourself, pal. You ain't been doing so bad. Oh, yes. I've eaten quite a bit, but then there's no sense in eating Tarzan out of house and home. Go right ahead. Eat all you want. We can't carry any of this food with us. You'll have to hunt as we go along and... Hey, now, listen. Get this straight. We're not heading back to Gonica. You promised to tell me why you feared that part of the jungle. I didn't promise. Pete did. All right, Pete. If you've had enough to eat, Pete, suppose you just sit back and tell me the story. Ah. Is it all right to tell him, Matty? Ah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, it was this way, see. Uh, Pete and I were hands on the Anna Third sailing out of Singapore. And a more miserable, rat-ridden old hulk you've never laid your eyes on. No decent food aboard either. Tin stuff, mostly cheap can rations or, or something. Oh, that's right. The grub was a fair horror. I see. Well, we gets to Carisi. That's near Gonica, no? Yes, I know. Right, well, we, we pulls into port to pick up a load of copra. We'd been out for six months, and by this time we were so bloody tired of that tin food we was fit to scream. Get to the point, Pete. Well, if I ain't telling it nice enough to please your honest, you go ahead and tell it yourself. Okay, I will. To make it short and sweet, Pete here, me, and six other guys jumped ship, see? We took along enough of that tin stuff to get us by until we lined up some decent food. We hadn't drawn our pace, we couldn't buy any. And we hightailed it out of Carisi. Oh, we didn't know where we was headed, but it didn't matter as long as we got away. You headed for the interior? Yeah. And we hadn't gone a mile before the skipper of the Anna Third called Copper. <laughs> yes. His old crew was gone and he couldn't pick up a new one in Carisi. No, not bloody likely. <laughs> He's probably still sitting there. Well, Tarzan, I don't know where they rounded them up, but there must have been a dozen of them. Uh, watchmen come after us, all with guns. And we didn't even have a cap pistol with us. Uh, we're getting to the story of the pearls very slowly. Well, this is where we get to it. You see, when we reached Gonica, they were right behind us. There wasn't any place to hide in that one-horse town, so we kept going, all eight of us. Just beyond the town, we reached some low mountains, and we stumbled across a huge cave. And we hid there. We should never have done it. I wish I'd never seen that cave. Yeah, it was cold and it was damp. But it looked as though it'd be safe from those watchmen. Well, I guess it was, but they kept looking for us. We could hear them outside night and day for a week. And, and that night, it happened. The first time, I mean. What happened? Well, it was old Murphy. He was sitting the furthest back, and he had his rations by his side. Long about midnight, he fell asleep. And when he woke up, his rations was gone. Yeah, but whoever took them left one of those pearls in its place. That's the most fantastic fairy tale I ever heard. It's true. Six times it happened. Oh, six different nights, Governor. So help me. 
Six lots of canned rations stolen, six pearls left. Uh Then what happened? Well, sir, it it just so happens that Harry and me was the only ones without a pearl. And the only ones still had their rations. Well, we'd gathered a few berries and things near the cave's entrance, but that wasn't enough. So Harry and me agreed to split what we had left with the others, providing that we was all partners in everything. I made them let me hold the pearls before we give them any of that grub. And, And rotten as it was, they agreed. But then they must have got to thinking. Whoever was leaving them pearls was leaving it in payment for that junk. But we'd eaten most of Pete's and only mine was left by this time. One more bunch of grub and one more pearl. Yeah, and the others weren't satisfied with seven pearls for the eight of us. At least that's the way we figured it out later. They didn't say nothing to Harry or me, but when we were sleeping that last night, the rest of them must have got up and started back into the cave. As deep it was. And they was after the place where them pearls come from. Pete and I woke up all right. Just in time to see the last of that scurvy lot being dragged away. Dragged away? Oh, they were screaming and carrying on awful, they was. And you could hear that they was being choked. By the most horrible-looking creatures I've ever seen. Not that I could see much of them in the deep shadows. They wasn't men, Tarzan. Though they had arms and legs. Yeah, and thin, sort of spidery hands. And, and fingernails, or it was claws, seven or eight inches long. And they was all white, Tarzan. White all over, I mean, and sort of shiny in the darkness. More of a gray, I, I'd say. Except for their eyes. Their eyes was a sort of pale and red-rimmed. Go ahead. What did you do? What did we do? Uh, We ran. We did just as fast as we could. Uh, And we've run most of the time since then. We thought we were bad off with a rap facing us for jumping ship. Well, if we'd run from bad grub on a rotten ship, you can imagine what we did with those those creatures after us. The story is very interesting. Now we will head for the caves near Gonica and find out if it's true. Only a man of Tarzan's strength and determination could have forced Harry and Pete back in the direction of the Cave of Horror. But the two men had little alternative, for Tarzan's knife remained a constant threat. Mile after mile of endless jungle was traversed, and the already weary strangers staggered on unwillingly. Suddenly, Tarzan motioned for them to stop and to remain silent. Hardly a dozen feet away, a huge leopard crouched in the shadows... Pete and Harry recoiled in fear, but Tarzan leaped forward, his knife flashing overhead. The leopard roared with pain as the knife found its mark, but with its last breath of life, the leopard clawed out at its killer. Tarzan grasped the great beast in his hands, lifted it from the ground, and then threw it to the earth with enormous violence. Did you hear that? The blight is a bloody savage. Never mind what he is. Did you see how he handled that leopard? Yes, of course I saw it. I've got eyes in my head, haven't I? Do you know what it means? Means? I don't know what's in that cave, but a guy who can sling a leopard around like that can handle anybody or anything. You think so, matey? You said you had eyes in your head. Well? Oh, with his help, we could find where those pearls come from. We could have every blasted one of them. A real fortune. <laughs> six pearls. We can have six hundred. Six thousand, maybe. Quiet, matey. He's coming back. I cut off enough meat so we'll not go hungry. We may have a long vigil in your cave if we're to wait for men who will bring us pearls. Yeah, having some food along may not be such a bad idea. Well, let's get going, huh? Yes, Governor. Let's uh, move along towards the cave. We can't be wasting time, you know. Sworn the cave was right about here, I would. I told you we took a wrong turn back there by the big rock. Well, how can you tell all the rocks around here look the same? Wait a minute. Uh, what, what's up, Governor? That yachting cap on the ground, did that belong to any of your party? Oh, blimey, that's Murphy's cap. Yeah, and he had an arm when they took him. I recognize the place now. The entrance to the cave's right over there, behind that bush. Come on, then. Hey, hey, let me pick up the cap. I always had anchoring for Murphy's lid. Uh. Here, here now. Hurry up, Pete. Let's not get separated. Yes, who ain't for me? Uh, yeah, you, you see this, Tarzan? <laughs> right inside the band. Gold letters, too. Dennis C. Murphy. Now, he bought this hat in a little shop in Singapore, down a little side street it was. I was with him I tell cave. you, fool, we're practically at the mouth of the cave. Oh. Yes, there's a cave there, all right. This is the one where they gave pearls away? This is it, all right. It's colder inside than it was last time. Seems like it. It is a big cave. You can tell from the currents of air. 
Over there was where the eight of us slept. And where did you see these figures? Over that way. That's where we saw them pale eyes and the claws. And he wasn't spoofing you. Seven or eight inches long, those claws was, Tarzan. Hey, Tarzan, where are you going? To find out where those charming creatures came from and where they went. Hey, watch out! Right behind you, Tarzan! The eyes! The pale eyes! And the claws, Tarzan! The claws! <laughs> <laughs> In just a moment, the exciting conclusion of Terror at Night. Yeah, you did it, Governor. You beat them scurvy creatures off. I had leave that. I never got my hands on one of them. They slipped right out of my grasp. What, what do they look like up close, Governor? I, I couldn't see anything but their eyes in this blackness, Pete. Well, they were scared of you, all right. We're safe in the cave now. Mm. We're a breeze from here on in, we are. That's right. If you outfought them once, you can do it again. What are you getting at, Harry? <laughs> at their supply of pearls, I hope. So, that's why you finally decided to come back willingly. You look to me to get the pearls for you, huh? Oh, now, we'll cut you in for plenty, we will, Governor. Nothing cheap about us, there ain't. Here's what we figured. Now that you know we were telling the truth, we can go into Gonica and dig up some tin boxes. Empty boxes. But we'll make like they was full, see? We'll each lie down at night with a box by our side. Like they had them tin rations in them. And then when they come out to grab them... We have the meat I took along the trail. We'll place that by our sides as we pretend to sleep. All natives of the forest use traps, but the bait must be real. It's our law. Okay, Governor, whatever you say, so long as you go along with our little plan. Sure, any way you want to do it, Tarzan. Just as long as we get them pearls. I wouldn't count on it, Harry. But I'll confess I want to see those strange underground creatures. I'm willing to set a trap, but perhaps we ourselves may prove to be the bait. <laughs> sleep? Not bloody likely. Yeah, the night's almost over and they haven't come. They won't come if they hear you talking. You must pretend to be asleep. If I ever close my eyes, I will be asleep. Oh, me too. I'm dying for a little shut-eye. Yes, our journey was tiring, but we can't risk sleep. You can see the sun starting to come up outside. I guess they ain't coming. Maybe they don't like fresh meat. Maybe all of them canned rations. And you men know little of the jungle. The creatures whose stronghold we've invaded are playing the jungle game of patience. They'll come. You can bet your lives they'll come. In fact, our lives may be the prize in this game. Day came at last, and then night again. Three days and three nights went by, and still the vigil continued... For Harry and Pete were resolved to get the precious pearls, and Tarzan was determined to solve the mystery of the strange underground inhabitants. Now Pete and Harry lapsed often into fitful snatches of sleep, and even Tarzan's lids were heavy. It was the fourth night. All was as silent as death. Harry and Pete were asleep again, and Tarzan was fighting sleep. But finally his eyes closed, his head nodded, his breathing became heavier. Now pale eyes rimmed with red peered through the sable darkness. Spidery legs scurried across the cave floor. Thin, slippery bodies glided toward the sleeping men, and talon-like claws, hundreds of them, reached for the intruders. No! No, take your claws from my throat! Help, Tarzan! Help, Tarzan! Tarzan. 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 Breathe! I I can't help you. They're all around me. They're slimy. I, I, I can't get my hands on them. No! No! They're putting chains on me. Chains! Uh, me too. It's no use. We can. No, you won't. I refuse. Ah. They, they knocked Tarzan over the head. He, he's out like a light. Uh, I'll give up. Uh, hey, Annie. Huh? If you don't struggle, they don't do anything to you. Look, I, I, I've stopped trying to fight them. Look, look, they're carrying Tarzan to the back of the cave. Yeah. Yeah, and that big one's motioning us to come. Well, I suppose... I suppose we haven't got no choice. I'm not having them claws around me throat again. Me neither. 
But I, I guess this is curtains for me and, and for you and for Tarzan. Brought us. They, they carried you and we walked down a thousand stone steps, I'd say. Oh, if only they'd leave us alone instead of just standing here glaring at us out of those eyes. This looks like a room in which hundreds of them must sleep. Well, on them blooming shelves. Yes, some of them are lying on those stone bunks now. Yeah, maybe they got a fortune in pearls, but they sure ain't enjoying life. Now watch out for those big ones near you. They seem to have their eye on you, Harry. Well... Lying here wondering about our fate isn't going to do any good. You! <laughs> I am Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. I did not come here to steal your pearls or do you harm. <laughs> My only wish is to speak to your chief, your uh, your leader, your, your high priest. <laughs> no use, Tarzan. There it is. Look, one of them's motioning to you. I see you. I shall follow you. Perhaps he's taking me to their leader. Wait for us. Yeah, yeah, we're coming with you. No, no. I guess you aren't. You better walk back before they're all on top of us again. But you ain't going to leave us here, Tarzan. I have no choice. We've found out that we cannot best them in a fight. But he's leading you to a big stone door. Once you go through there... Yeah, look, Tarzan, we got to stick together. If I can make my thoughts known to their leader, should I be permitted to talk with him, I will try to save your lives as well as my own. Even though I have nothing but contempt for you. Well, now, look, Governor Tarzan. But I can make no premises. For who knows what lies beyond that door. You may approach me, Tarzan. You speak. And you know my name. A few of us are left to know many things. But the accumulation of knowledge is now difficult for us. But we may travel only at night. I don't understand. As a matter of fact, I understand nothing about you or your... your people. You are people. Humans. We were once a proud race. Too proud to bow to the wills of the pharaohs. The pharaohs of Egypt? Yes. We fled from there thousands of years ago, bringing with us only such wealth as we could carry in our pockets. But the pharaohs' legions pursued us across the desert, across jungles across the rivers and swamps. But thousands of years ago? My people took to underground caves to escape the pharaoh's fury. We have remained here ever since. And living underground, we have disintegrated. We have become something less than human, living on roots and insects, seeing no light. Now only a few of us can speak, and each year the number grows less. Soon we will disappear, all of us. We are nothing. We have nothing. But the pearls? Meaningless. Even our attempt to use them for a little food, for which we were happy to pay, ended in disaster. Disaster for the men who tried to enter your underground kingdom? They met no disaster. Not even the one who almost escaped, the one whose hat you found. You see, our cave is but the hub of a vast network of underground tunnels. The men were taken back to their ship. You didn't harm them? Not seriously. But they shall long remember what they went through. They will not return for pearls. And what of us? The two who came with me and, and me. After we have relieved them of the pearls, of which they are not worthy, they will also be taken to their ship. And what do you intend to do with me? Your case is different. Oh? The men are taking off my chains. Does that mean... That you are free on one condition. And what is that? That you take the pearls, all that we have. That hardly sounds like punishment. They are not for your own use, but for ours. You are to buy us healthful foods, books, materials to teach us to live again. Of course. I should be happy to. Perhaps it is too late, but then maybe some of our people may be reborn. Oh, not the miserable creatures you've seen, but their children's children's children... I see. I do see. And instead of being hideous creatures who bring terror at night, we may grow to be real people who laugh by day. (laughs) 
In just a moment, a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. Off the southwest coast of Africa, there lies the tropical island of San Lorenca, so beautiful that travelers are apt to forget its dangerous shoals, its perilous reefs, the sea monsters that lurk beneath the apparently tranquil sea. Tarzan faces these dangers and others brought by man in our next story, Danger Off San Lorenca. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.